people. And if you're watching live, checking us out on YouTube or listening on your favorite podcast provider, you are most definitely my people. Welcome to another episode of Botch Pots and Chair Shots. I'm your host, a chef by trade and a mark by choice. I am the Will Gray. Joining me tonight, hailing from the prize city, he is the Northeast beast, the bus to killer. He is the prize. He is Alec Price. Alec, thanks for coming on. Shout out some wrestling, brother. How are you? I'm good, you. Thank you for having me on, G. Man, I'm excited to have you here. So let's start at the top, man. You've been featured on IWTV. You've got this intense cult following growing on the Indies. How does it feel to be the prize in 2022? Oh, it feels great. This is my, you know what I mean? This is the year of the prize. I feel like every year I can make it the year of the prize. I don't know. It's just been great. Past couple of years have been no, awesome. Uh, growing up in the Northeast, I'm going to assume I know the answer, but I'm going to ask anyways. What kind of wrestling were you exposed to growing up as a kid? um wwe and tna uh whatever was free you know what i mean yeah. i was on tv and we could watch it so that's i was exposed to that most of it like i knew of indies but i wasn't like like i went to like one indie show when i was a kid um and i i don't even remember the promotion but it was at a, a moose lodge in attleboro i think but yeah i mean i watched tna and, and wwe most of my life so and when I started getting older and started like messing with backyard wrestling, that's when I started like, you know, figuring out about ROH and everybody. So like so many guys, I, I when I talked to them, including myself many moons ago, all of us started in the backyard as fans. Uh, recently, you got you were involved with GCW's Backyard Wrestling 4. What was that event like to have an opportunity to kind of go back to those grassroots quite literally? Oh, it was, it was, uh, it was amazing. I had, I had, I had a blast. It was just like, it's a dope cause it's a little show, but it's also like a little like party. And it, it was, it was, it was great. Like, I just got to be like the gift again. I felt like I was back in the backyard with my friends. Have, you know what I mean? Like I didn't know anything of wrestling. It was just, it was pretty cool. It was pretty cool. You know what I mean? I, I, I liked it a lot. <laughs> So watching some of your matches, one of the big things I've noticed about you, you have a ton of speed and agility. So when somebody your size, your speed, your move set, you come against a brick wall of a guy that's 6'5", 350. How does Alec Price handle that size difference of a guy that's just going to be a monster compared to somebody who relies so much on speed and agility? Um, so the, uh, the difference, you know, I'm, I'm a chameleon. Uh, I can wrestle any style. I can go with anybody. I can have a bang with anybody. It's not like, like I can legit, if somebody's like a wrestler, I can, I'm going to mimic whatever I got to do and do my own stuff so I can beat them. So it doesn't matter if you're 300 pounds or you're 150 pounds, I'm going to figure out a way to beat you. If you're three fit, if you're a brick wall, you're a brick shit house, it's easy. I'm just going to fly around you. I'm going to cut you down and I'm going to make sure every little hit is precise and gets you in the right spot. So it just wears and tears your whole body until I get that three count. So the intensity of an Alec Price match, it has to be hard to keep up for so long, whether you're running five minutes or you're working 25 minutes, like you go, 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 go constantly. How do you prepare mentally knowing the physical toll your body is about to go through to have a match like you have? Um, nothing. There's no, there's no mental toll on me. Um, this is what I, I would love to do and I want to do for the rest of my life. So I have no problem going in there and having bang is like, if I can't produce the type of match I know I can produce, I don't want to be in the ring. So I, I already have a clear understanding of this is what I want to do. And if I got to do stuff and go crazy, I got to go crazy. Like the intensity is always there. I say my prayer before I go out, you know what I mean? My little football prayer gets me hype. I smack myself in the face a couple of times and there ain't nobody like me when I step out that curtain. You're the, the more video I watch, you're, you're absolutely right. You're one of a kind in a sense that you're young, you're hungry. You're already climbing through the ranks. What are your career goals for somebody who's setting in his early 20s and could be in the business another 25 years, realistically? Like my career goals or somebody else's career goals? Mine? Your career goals. I want to be signed. Um, that's, I, that's my career. I want to make this my job. I want to be doing this for the rest of my life. Like, I mean, right now I'm basically working full time. Like I have a part time job and everything, but like, I'm working five days. Like I just came off a weekend, like a whole week of wrestling. I work five times in a weekend. So I want to be signed. I want to do this. I want to, I want everything that comes with it and I'll put in whatever I got to do to get that. You know what I mean? Like it's that it's just, I don't know. Like I want to be signed and I want to just, I want to be everywhere. Like I feel like not a lot of guys, people are like cool being indie guys and I'm cool with being on the indies. I love the indies, 
but I also want, I want money. You know what I mean? I want to move my family out to freaking. I want to take care of my family. I want to provide for me. I want to make sure that I'm actually doing what I said I want to do as a kid. I want to live my dream. You know what I mean? For sure. Anybody's dream. Uh, so speaking on that, uh, I'm going to look at this question in two different parts. <clears throat> I want you to talk on one half of it, which is going to be limitless, res limitless wrestling. You're currently their champion. You're wearing the weight of the strap everywhere mm -hmm. you go, not just in Maine anymore, not just in that Northeast. Everywhere you go, people know that you're wearing that limitless belt. How does it feel? Because limitless has had some guys come through that locker room. How's it feel to be that dude right now, knowing wherever you go, there might be somebody who came through limitless or has been through limitless, like, but you're that guy now with the target on your back. I feel fine. If anybody's feeling froggy, they can jump. I've had the strap. I'm the second longest reigning limitless champion. I'm going for the first longest reigning. I'm going for AG's record. I didn't get this strap and I didn't get, you know, I haven't held this championship for this long because I'm some bum. You know what I mean? I've worked my ass off to get where I need to be. I've been busting my butt at Limitless. When they weren't giving me opportunities, I made my own opportunities. So, you know, if I meet people that went to Limitless, that's good. You know what I mean? But at the end of the day, if they want, they want a shot. They're feeling froggy. They can jump. I'm not, I'm not no bitch. You know what I mean? I'll fight anybody. Let's do it. You know what I mean? So the second half of my question now is, Southern Underground Pro, the Bone Storm champion. What are some of the biggest differences you see when you wrestle up in Maine for Limitless, but then you come down south to my hometown in Nashville? What are some of the biggest differences you see between wrestling in those two territories? Um, not really wrestling. It's more like the crowd. The crowds are a little bit different. You know what I mean? Up in the Northeast, like, they want you to, like, they want, like, Southern crowds. They want you to play to them. They want to be, you know what I mean, like, invested and, you can get away with doing some like old school stuff, not having to do so much like super indie spots because they'll pop for anything up in the Northeast. It's a mixture of both. Like they still want to be invested. They still want that Southern charm, but like they want to see if you can hang. It's not about if you, it's if you can hang, can you hang? Cause we got some of the best talent in the Northeast, like in any, an in independent wrestling Northeast has always produced the best talent, especially New England. So it's, you got to hang. When you look at the, the big east side of the country with the northeast, then you get the south, then you get that east coast crowd, that Philly feel. What do you think about that difference, that bridge between the north and the south when people start talking about that Philadelphia, that Pittsburgh, that Ohio crowd, when you start getting into that, that more extreme fandom? Because, mm -hmm. um, I, I, you know, the territories are different, like, the Northeast Territory is two separate territories in one. Northeast is New England and the Tri-State Territory. So, like, people from New England have to break into New York, New Jersey, Pennsylvania scene, and then they have to break into us. And it's the same with the Southeast, you know what I mean? So every everywhere is just built different, but I feel like as long as you can produce the type of matches and keep putting on, you can be able to go anywhere. Like, there's no bridge them, you know what I mean? Like... But it also, like, in wrestling, it, all, it always takes, like, one person to notice you to get you on a show. So, yeah, like, try the, the, the same but different. I mean, Northeast wrestling is the best wrestling. So, fuck the Southeast. Them busters. <laughs> I bring that up. I recently had somebody who said he didn't like wrestling on the East Coast at all. He brought up West Coast wrestling, said West Coast was the best ones. They had the nah, best like West Coast West. Is good. I, I feel like every wrestling is good. It's just you know, the fans are different. So people's tastes are a lot different. Like in the West coast, you know, they, they have a lot of Lucha and all that. You know what I mean? Like a lot of different styles that like the East don't have, you know what I mean? And like, and all of that, but like East coast wrestling is a lot more old school than West coast wrestling is. So that there's that, like, if you go from South to East, if you go from South to Northeast, it's all like, I was, my trainer is trained by Kowalski. You know what I mean? I was trained old school. So like a lot of old school stuff's on this side where you got the new, you know, West Coast has always been like, they're better than the East. West Coast got great wrestling. I feel like wrestling's good everywhere. Do you feel like you called yourself a chameleon earlier when we were talking? Do you feel like being able to adapt your style so well is what lends for you to be successful all over the country? Because when you look at traditional Southern wrestlers, they have a vibe. Then you look at guys from the West Coast with the flips and the luchadors. Do you feel like the fact that you are so well-rounded, you can technic you can be technical, you can strike, you can fly, you know, you can brawl, you can get into the hardcore stuff. Do you feel like your versatility is what lends you to be successful everywhere? where you go yeah 
because like not everybody can have a good match with everybody or not everybody can do that because they'll like they'll go in there trying to have their regular match when that's not what's like I, I'm, I'm able to wrestle anybody like my trainer said to me one day he was like there's going to be a point where training's not going to do anything for you the only way that you're going to get better is by going on the road and facing people of different styles and, and that's the only way and I feel like because like you said my versatility like I'm able to do anything I'm able to face anybody I'll face in any match so like I'm I'm good I'm an all-around player I'm the perfect person to legit be like yo we have this spot like look at the Dante Martin match you know what I mean it was supposed to be Dante Martin and Ruckus at uh at uh all I want Sean Henderson presents Marcus is mad as a show they know that if there's going to be anybody that they can get last second to put to put in that spot and have a straight banger with him, it's gonna be me. It doesn't matter if I'm the last if I'm the last second person or I'm already booked on the show. People know when they see an Alec Price match, they see a banger. What's your favorite venue? You've wrestled all over, man. You've got to have one. Yeah, um, I like I like the, sh- the showboat's pretty cool. I like. Um, a, a enjoy wrestling's venue in pittsburgh <sighs> bro it's beautiful it's like an old church that they like it's like now it's like a club or a bar but it's got it's just gorgeous and like maybe one i think that one and the altoona pennsylvania venue because it was like an old mosque that they like renovated to an event center and it's just beautiful architecture you know what i mean so definitely enjoy in altoona when you wrestle in Nashville and you wrestle, you and I were talking about Basement East before we got on. When you wrestle at a venue like that, that's it's not intimate in the wrong way. When you get down into it, it opens up and breathes real big for the amount of like for the venue size. Like, do you think it's cool when you get that vibe when you go, get to walk down into like a basement of the venue or something like that? And it's not necessarily this huge auditorium. Do you like do you still appreciate those underground feels like when you come somewhere like the under uh, the Basement East? Because, I mean, like, I don't – the uh, the cool auditoriums and big spots and venues are dope, but those little venues are just so intimate that I feel like you can get a better reaction from crowds and, a be- like, just have an all-around better show in those shits. Plus, it's, I like I like a little grunge, you know what I mean? Some little grungy is always a good thing, you know what I mean? A little dirt, always a good thing. So, fuck it. I like, I like, I like any venue I wrestle at, but, like, the small ones are dope because it's a lot more intimate. You can get with the fans, you know what I mean? Like – you could be able to like you're right there while they're right next to you compared to like you're right here but they're up in the stands up there you know what i mean like they're up in the balcony you can't like physically interact with them being like yo 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 what's good what's good yo g say my say that garbage god you know what i mean like when you have that small intimate setting it's like everybody's involved all the fans feel like all right i'm a part of the show you know what i mean when you're wrestling on TV versus wrestling in a small house show like that, is there a, a difference in your match prep for how you work in a match with a TV match versus just a house show? I mean, yeah. Um, I mean, I, I haven't been on TV yet. It's big yet. But the thing is, um, it's, I mean, it's a different style of wrestling. TV is a lot different. You got to hit marks. You got to hit times. You got to get them camera angles. You got to have selling compared to like if you're on a house show and you really shouldn't, you're not really worrying about that because you got 15 minutes and you got, you know what I mean, plenty of time and you have not, you don't have really a lot of restrictions. You know what I mean? So there's definitely a difference between like preparing for a TV match and preparing for a regular indie match. Nice. Okay. Well, Alec, look, man, I close all my interviews with five rapid fire questions that may or may not have anything to do with wrestling. Are you ready? I'm down. Let's bring them. What's your favorite food? Mac and cheese and hamburger. Those are good picks. You like hamburger helper, or are you talking mac and cheese with just like browned ground oh, beef? Okay, like I like I love hamburger helper, but mac and cheese and hamburger is the struggle hamburger helper. When we couldn't afford hamburger helper, we just put Kraft mac and cheese and hamburger together, and bam. Also, like chicken broccoli and ziti too. Okay, what is your favorite musical artist or performing group? Damn, that's a hard one. Uh, I like one four from uh, Australia, West Sydney. You know what I mean? Aussie drill, baby. That shit's fire. Do you have a nice. I'm from England. Do you have a favorite sports team? Uh, yeah, I, I love the Bruins. 
Hockey guy? Love the Bru- I love I love all sports. I love the bees. Um, but I'm like more of like I'll ha- I love my Boston teams, but I have like outside teams that I still like because I'm like I like colors and mascots and history and stuff like that. You know what I mean? Yeah. Who's your NFL team then? If you if you're a, a sports fan, if I gotta pick my NFL favorite team, I love the Pats, but I'm also a Packers fan. Nice. And one more question: um, What is your favorite food? Do you ask that? Did I ask that one already? Mm-hmm. I did not. Squ- I did not check it off. Okay. Um, what is your favorite finisher that isn't your own? Ooh. Uh... I like the what is it called? Uh, Will Osprey's cool move. That shit's pretty fire. Um, who else got a cool last one? Dylan, uh, Dylan McKay's got a cool one. The electric chair like spin into the neck breaker. Um, the death sentence. You know, like the bloody Sunday. You know, carry hits. It's a lot of cool finishes. Nice. Or like Ty Hill, he just hit like I don't know if it's his finish or not, but like at the backyard show, he hit like a shooting star, like 420 spin, like what? Like, I wish I could do that. Like I could do like maybe one or two core screws, but that shit was crazy. Anytime I try to go for a shooting star, my body's just like, nope. You get to about that midway point, point and you're like, nope, I'm done. <laughs> the minute that my head, it's legit. The minute that my head starts to go back, my body's just like, nope, sent on. <laughs> All right, Alex, this is my favorite part of the show, man. Just tell everybody where you're at, plug your stuff, what you've got coming up this week or in the, the near future, not necessarily just this week. So what's good, what's good? First things first, if you're listening to this podcast, it's one either because you're a really big fan of me, it's probably more because you're a big fan of this podcast. So if you ain't following this and you're listening to us, you're a bum, you're a buster. Go follow, go like, subscribe. I'm the Prize City OG, the Prize City OG in Twitter and Instagram. Same handle. I even got TikTok at the Prize City OG. So you can't miss out. And there's no switching names. You know everything. I got Facebook, Alec Price. Uh, my Facebook page, the Prize Alec Price. I got a PWTs, Pro Wrestling Tees. Come at me. The pri- you know what I mean? I- I'm everywhere. So come, come see me. I got Limitless coming up on the 23rd. I'm facing Big Beat, defending my championship. I got Wrestling Open this Thursday, Chaotic Wrestling this Friday, uh, J- JCW this Sunday. So I'm all over the place. There's always a chance to you, for you to catch Alec Price. You feel me? So don't be a buster. Be a G, not no flea. Follow and come at me. All right, Alec, I appreciate you stopping by and chatting about some wrestling, man. And now as we close another episode of Botch Bots and Chair Shots, I want to take a minute and thank you for listening. Remind you to like, follow, subscribe. Literally anywhere you do anything on the internet, subscribe, then unsubscribe, but then subscribe again. Leave a comment telling me how great I am but or telling me how terrible I sound. Either way, it helps the algorithm. It helps find new listeners. For the prize, Alec Price, I am the Will Gray. Thanks for stopping by and listening, my people. Peace.